I am an artist. I was an artist before I became a designer. Mm-hmm. I start drawing humans. So I still have a sketchbook with me. <laughs> yeah. And whenever you find myself, you know, uh, doing nothing, I'll be scribbling something. Maybe humans. My my favorite subject is, uh, you know, making portraits. Hello, sorted. What's up? Kesa, <laughs> <laughs> how are you? Badiya, badiya, bro. How's you? Good, yeah, good, good. How's hey. how's life in Delhi? Back to India. Back to India, yeah. Actually, we have to do a lot of catching up. Because <laughs> I think uh, last time, uh, my flight pe ham log mile the Italy, right? Right, exactly. That was the last meeting. Yeah. <laughs> सही 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 यार गुड लाइक यू नो थोड़ा बहुत आइडिया है देखो यू नो दैट आई वुड डिजाइन एजुकेशन थोड़ा सा अभी आई एम बेटरिंग डिजाइन एस्पिरेंट्स एंड साथ में साथ आई हैव अनदर स्टूडियो कॉल रेड टिन स्टूडियो वेयर आई डू इलस्ट्रेशंस एंड मार्बल इनले क्राफ्ट वर्क फॉर क्लाइंट्स ऑन ऑन डिमांड बेसिस एक्चुअली ओके या या मेड टू ऑर्डर Yeah, I've been I've been quite following you on Instagram, seeing at your stuff, getting inspired. In Arey, fact, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, man. Instagram, Instagram, it reminds me of a lot of uh, new things that you were doing right now. I remember a uh, lot of new stuff, uh, completely different stuff from the ones that I had actually seen before uh, mm-hmm. in your portfolio. Old uh, star ka tha then. Uh, it's a it's a what do you say uh, because i remember your work i i saw your work when the day i met you you remember that classroom mein baithe the hum yeah yeah it live yeah, exactly <laughs> design school mein classroom mein baithe the and i was like shit <laughs> <laughs> that's a huge compliment for me <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy crazy so how is how is work man work work is going good and hectic as always as anybody could anticipate Studio life is a lot different than uh, college life we used to see. A um, lot of technicalities and you know, full of creativity. But still, uh, when when it becomes to you know production cars, sometimes uh, it, it 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 makes you kind of a block, you know. Yeah. Not a block, but uh, when you get a lot of restrictions, you can't be free actually, right? Yeah. When you have to think by millimeter, millimeter, and then. uh yeah that story is completely different but yeah. overall the studio life is going great nice. uh, since i just joined reno mm-hmm. uh turning out a new ideas for new kind of mobilities and you know uh sometimes production vehicles too uh That's great great to know actually and the the thing that you mentioned about production vehicles and then concept vehicles right mm-hmm. so uh mujhe wo yaad hai project the one first time uh रेनो डिजाइन एकेडमी के में जब किया था प्रोजेक्ट जो विच कॉट शो केस इन ऑटो एक्सपो हां दिल्ली में यस यस वो प्रोजेक्ट मुझे भी याद है एंड मोस्ट ऑफ योर प्रोजेक्ट्स सारे कंसेप्चुअल है बहुत ज्यादा यस एंड यू आर आल्सो लाइक यू सेड यू आर वर्किंग ऑन प्रोडक्शन व्हीकल्स थोड़ा भी तो कैसा लग रहा है लाइक हाउ इज द एक्सपीरियंस एक्सपीरियंस इज एज आई सेड इट्स अ you know kind of when you go on production to be honest it's kind of sometimes boring in a, in a designer's perspective of course mm-hmm. but when you when you see from a layman's perspective that ah okay when when i tell people that i design cars uh, the usual response is whoa okay yeah. that's something you know that that was there and you know a lot of people are not aware in india still about that mm-hmm. so uh when when it comes to you know creating my own conceptual design i don't have any limits i because see i i did my bachelor of fine arts before i joined transportation design right and basically that's uh, what i find it inspiring in 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 my previous life uh you know how to break the boundaries it's it's not about um, you know just breaking the boundaries it's about thinking beyond the boundaries okay 
transportation design usually people when you say somebody you know uh, a transportation design thing they usually go to cars or mm-hmm. motorcycles mm-hmm. and uh, uh, sometimes you know yachts yeah but a thing a product that you know you know transports you from point a to point b is a medium of transportation right it could be anything it could right. be your uh, shoes it could be uh, a plane it could be anything and that's what i really um, try to search with how we are progressing with technology and uh, and whatever uh, amazing ideas do people come from you know like um, uh recently there's been this uh, boston technology uh, boston dynamics right they've created uh, ai robots yeah that's not actually meant for humans yet to you know to get uh, transported to a place but you know with that kind of technology imagine the possibilities yeah you know so yeah that's that's what i try to you know always find answer like you know how in a cooler manner you could get transported from point to point right. very cool and uh, i'd like to bring you back to one thing that you just touched upon mm-hmm. uh, you had a bfa uh, before getting into design yes so tell, tell me a little about how you got to know about design and dekha ki acha ha yaar transportation design is something that you know that you would be interested in how did that happen it's kind of a long and very messed up story since my <laughs> childhood <laughs> because a lot of people i was also lost that there is kind of a course or some kind of education that teaches how to design cars or uh, any medium of transport mm-hmm. as a kid i was you know a, it's it's like a cliche story uh, with a lot of designers i was interested into cars and i used to draw a lot when i was kid you know taking crayons and making out a matchstick horse and send it to my uncle uh, who who used to live in another city and i used to get a response from him I, at that time it wasn't you know uh, there wasn't any phone or uh, any mails with us so i used to send him a mail you know a written mail old school way wow. and he used to send me the reply after like uh, Uh, two three weeks i used to get it and i would just get a reply like you know oh, that was really amazing but if i see that horse that i used to draw for him uh that was really shitty <laughs> it was like you know a blob of clay and of uh, um legs feels like you know matchstick just put into that clay it was super bad but the way he encouraged me for that was the start point how i started to draw Mm-hmm. and how it never held me back you know and since then i'm drawing so that was a little boost uh, since my childhood and then i was also interested into cars i used to uh, get my toys you know run it through the walls and make murals through that walls and dirty my walls but uh, as i grew up um, after after i passed my you know uh, school and then got into college i took commerce actually uh, with no idea acha yeah uh, actually i didn't go to the college much but <laughs> yeah, i, I really cannot cool. i cannot imagine like i cannot even relate commerce to you right now yeah you know that point i couldn't have imagined that i would do commerce <laughs> but yeah i was uh, i was you know aspiring to take science but then i told this thing to my dad and my dad was are you serious and then he suggested me to take commerce and then you could uh, take your field whatever you like okay. so i took commerce and at that two years i was trying to search what i actually want to do in my life mm-hmm. i was totally lost i uh, i almost stopped drawing and uh, cars were you know getting an expensive passion for me uh even to you know buy nice scale models or toys so basically that that period of my life was completely blank then i got to know about this college uh, which uh, teaches you fine arts uh, it was in my city i belong from nagpur uh, that, that that's where i'm born and brought up so 
it was a government school and then my uh, mom she inquired about uh, this college and she told me that okay this is the thing you are kind of good at drawing so why don't you give it a try and then i said like yeah it's anyways better than commerce so yeah. why not so i i went to the college uh, it was quite rewarding all the four years i got merit award i i you know polished my skills over over that four years and uh, yeah then when i finished my fine arts still i wasn't satisfied you know there was something that i was feeling i could do better but uh, i didn't know what and somehow uh, with one of my seniors uh, he told me about uh, this course in pune there's this college in pune which teaches uh car design and i was like yeah man that's exactly what i could do you know to get my life better so the college was actually dypdc mm-hmm. and i tried to contact uh, with a student from there and uh, um, he told me that okay this is the stuff you have to go through you have to make a portfolio and uh, you know uh, polish your skills and get a basic understanding of like how cars as they you know differentiate it within their proportions and all and the last thing what he said was <laughs> that i'd never forget do all these things and don't come to this college <laughs> there's oh, another wow. better place in, <laughs> in pune that is called dsk uh, try for that because that has a better uh, education over there i mean that's that's his words uh, yeah. so i tried for dsk Mm-hmm. and uh, i went through all the process like uh, those prelim exams and um, interviews and stuff and i got selected uh, straight away in the second year nice the guy who wow. chose me was um, he is george cronag is pretty amazing guy that one of my inspirational personalities in my past and then uh, yeah uh, in the college mostly the faculty was uh, you know coming from uh, other foreign schools like coventry and all so all the kind of education i got from there was uh, mostly in a european manner even the degree itself it's european okay so that was just another branch uh, in india from you so basically your family did they know when you said that okay i want to go for car designing did they know anything about this Yes, they had to know because they were the ones who was going to supply me all the finances. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. But how difficult was it to convince them that you want to go uh, car design? It was pretty difficult uh, uh, for me and for them too because I already uh, got a degree, right? I I was uh, I was an artist when I completed my fine arts, and even after that, I spent one year, uh, one year to you know. uh explore things uh, talk with galleries display my art so there when i told them when i told my father like okay uh, i think i uh, i can do better uh, with my life you know mm-hmm. choosing transportation design uh his reaction was okay i mean yeah if you think so uh it's cool for you but you have to spend you know another years of your life to you know get educated with something else mm-hmm. and at that point when i was you know pretty raw in thinking i i was like you know i when i want things i just want those things to be done so i told him uh, for me it doesn't matter i if if i see myself in in a better place in future i don't mind spending these years again you know right. learning things so he said okay so uh, let's talk about it and then i showed him all the websites and all the info uh, and he was kind of shocked with uh, you know the huge amount that we had to pay yeah. and even i was i i knew like uh, it's it's not uh, something which you could you know i i don't come from a, a really rich family so uh we had to manage those exp- uh, you know expenses and all but he being really really supportive he came with me to the college ha- had a look at the college and then he uh supported me and still he was doubtful till i got a job but now if i ask my father did i made the right decision he would i don't see him saying you know yeah uh, 
Damn right. I mean, you would have visited the auto expo, right? Yes, yes, and I could see the pride in his yeah. eyes, and my mother she almost cried. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it's a proud moment even for me. Like I know this guy; he's there. Like he's a buddy; he's a friend of mine. Uski gadi wahan pe hai. Like the thing he designed, it's there in the auto expo. It's there for public display, and represented by a company which is a giant, right? So it's a great achievement, and talks a lot about your passion. Talks yeah. about how passionate you are about this field. That's one thing that everybody should have. You know, mm-hmm. be passionate about something. Mm-hmm. It, it really, it might take a bit of time, mm-hmm. but it would really pay you off. So let's talk a little about that passion. So when you decided that okay, you want to go for car design, mm-hmm. and you already had uh, the background in arts. You were, or you could sketch. You were able to paint in different kinds of mediums, etc. Right. Mm-hmm. So, when you joined the design school second year, in second year, directly, yeah. how difficult was it to get into that mindset of you know designing a car, like artist becoming a designer? It's mm-hmm. always there is this uh, debate uh, going. Artist is. For you know, you do it for yourself. Designer does it for the user, right? right? So, how difficult was it to you know switch the concept there? You know, like when they start teaching you about um, car design stuff, right? Mm-hmm. You don't straight away go into uh, all the technicalities of uh, what goes into you know car design. Mm-hmm. First, they try to polish your skills. uh with softwares and let's say mostly focused on hand skills like the analog ones like you know you sketch a lot and then when you you know proceed to all the final years or final semesters uh then you get to you know um do the actual car design thing till then it's like you know make uh you know a lot of fun with uh, whatever stuff you're doing and try to create a something which looks like that could transport you from point A to point B mm-hmm. so when i joined back uh, uh, in um, the ask for uh, straight away in the second year it, it was kind of pretty hard for me to get into all that flow because the guys that did the first year uh, uh, from the college they already knew some kind of softwares for example photoshop yeah. and then um, they knew the background of what goes into car design you know being in into that environment yeah i went there and the first day i remember was like uh, there was this photoshop session and uh, the guy straight away uh, gave us a photoshop an, uh, assignment to you know make some kind of fear but i guess i don't actually remember it was a photoshop or illustrator but yeah some kind of assignment that only a person could do who knows the software yeah. at least the 10% yeah. and i was there with you know <laughs> completely <laughs> blank mindset yeah. and i had to ask my friends okay how to do this how to make a canvas i had to start from there okay okay but i was uh, pretty good at uh, not i wouldn't say pretty good i was just good at drawing things mm. not a car because mm. drawing a car is it's even harder for any artist who is you know fresh into into this field so i i learned from my friends i made great great friends over there they are like you know my chatty buddies and yeah. it, it never felt like you know i met them in college so they helped me a lot with how to uh, uh, learn softwares and what goes into the process and yeah basically that's how i learned till the end of the second year i wasn't really good till the second year but uh, yeah till the third year i managed to get it yeah yeah i can i can see that i think the project titled uh, silver moon yeah when was that which year that was exactly uh, on the internship that i did in lunatic concepts mm-hmm. uh that was uh, basically when i finished my third year in dsk and i joined this uh, startup called lunatic concepts uh, and then i i did work on there f- uh, for some projects before 
but then then the, the, this happened like uh, one day a uh, brief came from charles bombay dear mm-hmm. so who's uh, he's a guy who you know boosts a lot of uh, fresh talent uh, sitting in france so we wanted to concept had a nice connection with him so we got a brief to actually make an aircraft um, that is based on ground effect uh, you know those sea planes which yeah. actually doesn't fly it just float uh, on the principle of ground effect yeah. over the sea so that it gives a great fuel economy and mm. um, you know all the technical stuff uh, i started working on that and then i had idea like okay um, how how do how if we make this as a dual purpose aircraft you know our luxury uh, just a two seater luxury mm. uh, style statement aircraft Right. So, Silver Moon actually started back then, and then he had also interns from uh, aeronautical engineering. So these guys helped me a lot uh, uh, with all. I mean, how, how to you know uh, get explained with the concept of ground effect? The guy himself uh, who uh, made Lunatic Concept, Abhishek Roy, he is one. <laughs> I mean, he's one another inspirational personality in my life. so he uh, was really pushing on me really hard to uh, you know uh, know me the things what goes into actually you know ground effect and then based on that principle we started to design the aircraft so that's how in 3 4 months uh, silver moon came up and then it was published in uh, french forbes and uh, even on the imagine active uh, website that charles bomba charles bomba did i know man. i it's it's like crazy i, I when i saw that uh, project of yours it was like crazy how did like because to me coming from an engineering background it was those days you know when i was just yes. uh, getting into design getting yeah. to know about the kind of mobility the options we have right and then i was like oh acha ye bhi kar sakte hain like you know to do this i didn't know about that so it was those days and i was like completely blown away okay like the possibilities are endless i mean it's mm. your imagination basically basically yes yeah. yes so i was crazy and uh, then i i started basically getting like drawing inspiration and getting motivated okay maybe there could be some no uh, even the way i think is a little in inclined towards conceptual projects and uh, stuff like that mm-hmm. but one thing that i always always faced i think i discussed with you before also taking an idea from mm-hmm. an initial t- stage to the execution mm-hmm. right yeah right this is something that a lot of students also ask me so it would be really great if you just talk a little about this mm mm-hmm. yeah i think that's one topic that really need to be discussed with uh, you know the young aspirants uh having an idea uh it's it's nothing great about having an idea because a lot of people can imagine things it what makes you a designer it's that's what the, the, the execution of that idea with all the possible uh, practicalities you know makes you a designer so let's say if you have an idea of uh, something that could uh, let's say fly and make you or make you fly mm. you have to first think about you know okay form could be cool and you know you could draw weird lines over the forms that would make it look sexy but then uh, you have to think about you know basic physics or basic uh, practicalities again because um, if 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 it looks sexy okay that's a sculpture mm. but if how that works uh, you know try finding stuff on internet like uh, okay you have this idea and if somebody uh on on the internet could also uh, you know came up with the technology but that thing is it's, it's like a proof of concept when you search on internet which you find something really working yeah so 
uh, I'm taking just an example of a flying thing, but that could be anything really. Yeah. So you have to think about what uh, what all things make it possible to work, and then try to rethink what your actual idea was, and what changes it needs the form you have in, in your first stage, uh, based on whatever technology could make it uh, you know happen. So. Based on that, uh, you see um, the form changing itself, and it looks more realistic. Mm-hmm. And then it uh, goes to you know final uh, final forms or final process. And then you could do you know always um, garnish it with uh, some kind of textures, some kind of patterns, and stuff like that. Right. So uh, one thing I would like to ask: you mentioned that there is. Uh, Certain angle of practicality to the project. So, mm-hmm. how important is the feasibility of a project when you are, let's say, uh, I think, of course, when you are at working at a company like Renault and uh, you are a part of the design team, and everything, of course, the practicality has to come into play. But how important is it for a student to be, you know, worried about or thinking about the feasibility of a project or an idea? Uh, for a student, I would say you guys have a lot of room to imagine. Uh, just you know, uh, give that little bit of room uh, to the viewer. That uh, if, even if in reality if it doesn't work, like you could, for example, a lot of uh, car industries nowadays with their concept cars are coming up with you know crazy steering wheels and all. But if you see that in in uh, real life, being uh, put into a production car and driven. It doesn't really go with uh, reality. So, for example, Tesla now with their new interior, they came up with a steering with uh, which which looks like you know a joystick. Yeah. That thing actually is on production right now, right? So, but the practicality of it is if if you see that thing into any other production car, which doesn't have an autonomous uh, you know, facility to it. Uh, it doesn't make it practical. But that car, being an autonomous, you don't have to worry much about steering. So you could actually go crazy, you know, with the form, and the car will take uh, care of rest of the fifty percent of your worry. Right. So when you are a student, you just have to think that much. Okay, mm-hmm. that uh, make viewer believe that okay, with some kind of technology, it could possibly happen. But when you are a student, you have to show the viewer like, um, okay, this much crazy you could go with the form, with the practicality you would think in your mind. So that would be my answer on that. Good. And then uh, when you are talking, like you discussed about feasibility of the project, right? So uh, you said execution is something that would make uh, somebody a designer, right? So right. everybody has ideas. Execution is something that makes a designer, him or her a designer. So, uh, what other skills do does a student need to become a transportation designer in specific? Uh, what other skills? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, basically, I I just talk about the basic skills uh, for the current condition right now because see first. And the most important is you need to know how to sketch, yeah. and not just sketch. Try to revolve it, revolve the form, whatever you are imagining into your mind, and you you would be able to sketch it with any perspective, any angle. That's the basic thing uh, which is needed with the industry right now. Then goes uh, over, you know. Uh, Photoshop skills with digital 2D skills and 3D skills. Uh, let's say a lot of things are trending with Blender nowadays. Yeah. So that's an add-on. But the basic skill that you need is to have a nice observation over anything mm-hmm. and how you could transform your thoughts into an emotional sculpture and then that sculpture into a feasible form. Uh, if we are talking about transportation, then how that form could, you know, uh, let's say for exterior, how that 
exterior creates an emotion uh, to the viewer mm-hmm. or if we are talking about interior how that interior form which you are imagining you know makes you makes the user feel like it's in a in a nice place anywhere you know that user would like to uh, sit into right so another thing that i'm going to pick up from what you just said a very interesting and very uh, i believe is a very important thing uh, you talked about emotion right right so let's talk talk about car design and emotion okay uh it's it's a very wide and subjective uh, topic yeah and something that uh, you know everybody would have their opinion on mm. so basically we have to uh, hit first the the on the phase like what is an emotion in, into car design mm. what do you uh, uh maybe it's it's a question for you like uh what uh, when when you see a car what kind of let's say um i give you an example of a suv mm. what what do you feel when you see a suv mm. right so i mean somebody would say that uh, you know it makes me feel free or makes me you know reach places and somebody would say it's a reminder for me not being sitting at home and you know yeah. go outside and when when you when we say that we have to hit that emotion to a particular uh, consumer mm-hmm. we have to build the product around it right and suv can't be with a um, you know super sexy surfaces i mean it could be but it won't look like an suv right mm-hmm. i'm talking here about real suvs you know yeah. sport utility vehicle which actually could do things not the pseudo suvs yeah so you know with with um, this this is a strange and amazing and interesting thing i find in suvs mm-hmm. because the suv trend was basically started with the jeep uh, yeah. during the world wars yeah. right yeah. and since then uh, if you see a lot of suvs they regardless of brand they go into you know a similar look alike way yeah take toyota for example toyota has a completely different uh, uh, design philosophy but when they make fj cruiser it yeah. still looks like you know uh, yeah. what an suv could look like yeah. take suzuki for example they have completely different uh, mm-hmm. design philosophy but they made jimny which is you know again SUV itself is it's like a brand so when you make an SUV it has to look like an SUV yeah so that's what uh, you know emotion goes um, into transportation design and then the most uh, commonly used word emotion is when you see you know super sexy mm. surfaces play of surfaces amazing reflections mm. that's uh, that's mostly used emotion word in um, in transportation design but yeah emotion could be anything anything that a user perceives when he or she um, see the product yeah, yeah that's uh, very well put and would it be would it be right to say that uh, emotional uh, let's say okay let me put it this way emotions are an integral part of design would it be right to say if you Uh, put it in uh, put it that way absolutely absolutely see design is something uh, which is a bridge uh, i mean uh, that's what i feel it's a bridge between uh, uh practical things and art so when you combine when you take things from art art is completely emotional right and uh, something that an engineer would make is completely practical and then the bridge is design so you take emotions from art make it look one of a kind and then you take all the practicalities from engineering and then you uh make a product you know so we talk a lot about how designing and everything happens in a lot of technicalities and also terms and design but i want to talk about right now the design that happens inside the studio like how is the studio 
organized? I mean, what are the various departments that you have inside the Renault Design Studio? Okay, so it's honestly it's not much uh, of a difference between what you learn in college mm-hmm. and uh, in 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 real world in real studio. So if I take uh, example of my studio. Um, it's just much more organized and work has been divided into uh, you know to a particular department so let's say uh, car it's it's never made by a single person it's uh, it's a team work and when when you it's it's just the team that you know gets selected by a person but then it comes to a team work right so when we say we work in a team um, usually this happens like um, if you have to design a car first comes the brief maybe from product planning or some um, technicalities again from engineers and all all the thing it combines in through the market research there comes a brief okay then uh, they say that there's a need of this kind of product into the market and then we start to think about it uh, in you know in by searching images how we could uh, make it look different if it's a competitor of some uh, other you know competitions then we set a benchmark then see what kind of uh, um, what kind of things are trending into you know what others are doing and how with our limitations we could you know compete with that and then goes with the sketching phases um, you know you design a car doodle it doodle a lot sketch thousands of sketches and then uh, you find two three sketches that could you know uh, that that looks promising and then starts the developing of the form uh, that's the period when all the digital modelers the CAD 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 modelers they come in uh, they try to help you uh with how your form would look like in a 3d uh in industries most of the companies they use autodesk sketches so um they, they they try to make the sculpture you, you you imagine and then you know then there goes a lot of to and fro uh with the thing uh okay this could be a bit better because when you sketch everything looks sexy but <laughs> when you see it in actual proportions yeah uh then you find out that okay this thing it's not working this thing is working yeah. some accidental uh nice things happen that yeah. you would like to keep it you know this the way it looks like and sometimes uh, simultaneously this um process also happens like color and material teams mm. they come in and they try to suggest you better and uh, cool materials which could you know make the car look more sexier and you know or maybe more useful mm-hmm. or maybe uh, a surface is too big how you know graphically we could cut the volume of the surface you know mm-hmm. so yeah when and this takes a lot of time it's yeah. it's so easy to say yeah, uh, yeah. in you know two three sentences but yeah. it's it's like a minimum of a years process yeah so yeah then it goes to engineers and then then the millimeter battle happens like okay you have to put <laughs> this thing back again then uh yeah those things those things are the great battle the great battle <laughs> the famous infamous battle <laughs> right yeah so uh one question about the process when you say that okay you have to come up with thousands of sketches and three or four sketches or let's say directions are picked out right mm-hmm. so how long do you have to do that you know research with your sketches uh unless see when if, um a lot of people would uh, i guess agree with me because when you sketch okay you think everything you're doing is right uh and that's the dark circle that's the darkest part you shouldn't fall into mm-hmm. because you when when you start uh, drawing stuff you see it from a perspective that you like mm-hmm. but i would suggest uh and a lot of people do that actually but uh, when when you do a lot of sketches you know just um, take a rest maybe have a coffee break or a days break and come back and look at what you've already done 
mm-hmm. and you i'm pretty sure a lot of at least a 50% of those things it doesn't work yes. it doesn't work the way you thought yeah so that's why it goes through that process that you have to sketch a lot you know mm-hmm. to actually see afterwards or maybe to get the right proportions at least on the previous stages mm-hmm. uh you know to get it really exactly hit, hit the bulls eye mm-hmm. so yeah that's why the process exists <laughs> yeah very important and uh, makes sense actually uh, i agree with that 100% like <laughs> <laughs> i i have uh, like had days when i was at school uh design school one day i make like 20 pages of ideation sketches and okay okay i'm done and i can just pick up couple of them maybe tomorrow but then you mm-hmm. find out that okay only one page of ek page jo kiya hai mm-hmm. out of 20 the only one page is useful in that right so you find that uh, totally and then there are also times when i felt like okay like how why did i even do this <laughs> this direction like why yeah. so i don't get understand what you said yeah and sometimes even you know as i said nice accidents happen too sometimes it happens like uh, okay you just left one doodle mm. uh, you think it wouldn't work but then yeah. when you come back and see it then you see oh okay that actually is b- much better than what i was thinking mm-hmm. you know? so you you basically open a lot of options when you do go through this process right that's cool now you talk about market research right they they do some uh market research understand the needs in the market and then they make a brief and all of that so right. so uh let's talk about trends here okay mm-hmm. the trends that are there in the indian automobile industry uh, even from a design perspective uh EVs were something that was supposed to you know uh, take over the uh, conventional automobiles that we have but in the indian scenario we see a lot of uh, let's say two wheelers moving in that direction right, right now very aggressive right we have to put it uh, four wheelers might take some time but uh, i think there could be some possibility not in the near future in some time some time so about that and then uh, there's sustainability the concept of sustainability right exactly. so what is your take on on this so yeah i'll i'll talk about the evs first hmm. because i think yeah you're right because india is the biggest market to sell two wheelers you know in, in on this planet so it's also if we consider you know the production cost that goes into making a two wheeler it's much less than making a four wheeler yeah so for us it's um, much more practical to go evs with uh, two wheelers first and a lot of companies are actually uh, doing great with the stuff um let's say my favorite which is ether energy you know which is sell in bangalore yeah they are doing they are making a scooter look sexy Yeah. I never saw a scooter that was, you know, that amazing before. Yes. And then comes uh, this again the startup called Ultraviolet. Yeah. Uh so that's that's one, you know, one inspirational thing you see in the market and it's it's easier for I mean, um, of course there's a lot of hustle for these guys too. But for yes. considering the Indian market, two wheelers are much more practical to bring in you know into ev world first and then when um, that's also like a you know a test for uh, other competitors to see if that really works and i'm pretty sure that it's going to work in future so when people will you know rather collect data from how evs are doing good with the two wheelers in india for sure i i don't see it in in the for, for the future that also we would see a lot of evs on four wheels um on on the road and then comes the concept of sustainability hmm. sustainability is it's a uh, did it ever left india that's my question to it because it was sustainable products were not uh, i won't say products but sus- you know 
uh, the concept of sustainability was ever since in India. Uh, I'd, I'd give an example of my of my grandmother. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she used to live in a village, right? And they have a lot of uh, um, things, uh, a, a lot of concepts of reusing the material which is uh, you know wasted or which is not in use anymore. So, for example, um, uh, let's say they owned a, a a bunch of cows. So sometimes you know the cow dung. It's uh, you know when they used to collect cow dung and make you know kind of a papad with that. And a lot of times they used to stick on the walls. And that would be the fuel to burn their chulas. You know yeah. those barbecues. Uh, the other example, the other great example was, uh, you know, the clothes that we don't wear. Mm. They used to tear them off and make rags out of it. And sometimes they used to make dolls to, you know, give it to the kids who are, you yeah. know, who are not really rich in, into the area and, you know, to play with them. Yeah. And my favorite thing was when she used to sit in the, um, in the hall uh, of the village and she used to stitch, um, uh, you know, uh, a, a tumble like um, thing, which yeah. we could, which was like the best comforter in, yeah. in winter days. Yeah, 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 I remember that. Yeah. So that's that's what sustainability was, you know, ever since in India. It's just it looks cooler when it goes through industrial process and it's you know developed and advertised by Western culture. Mm-hmm. That's a very interesting take on it and which is actually very true that we didn't, re- I mean, we didn't realize it till now that we already had it and we have had it for a long time. I think we we had it uh, and we realized it too, mm-hmm. but it just wasn't cool enough to use mm-hmm. and you know. Yeah. 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 That's true. The cool factor was added by the... Western. Yeah, when it goes through all the <laughs> you know industrial process and it when you see it being advertised somewhere, yeah, it makes it cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. That's the sad truth. Right. So uh, when you are you know working at your studio, mm. I'm sure you'd be working on multiple projects at a single time, right? Right. Right. So what what is the number of projects that you work on at a single time uh, it's um, not the case every time sometimes uh, there's really focused uh, projects uh, in, mm. the, in the studio mm. where everybody understands the you know the seriousness of the project and uh, that's the only time we have to work completely uh, on, on one project you know from inside out but uh, there are a lot of times where you have to handle and manage your time with uh, multiple projects and me being an interior designer and an exterior designer, uh, it's kind of hard for me. Uh, and I, I'd say a lot of people would agree with me that yeah. uh, designing exterior of the car needs completely a different mood when yes you uh, design an interior. Yes, I wouldn't uh, tag myself with an interior designer or exterior designer because I see, you know making a good design it's the, because the principles are same right uh it doesn't it's it's kind of a fashion thing to call yourself a um, exterior designer or interior designer and of course it takes a lot of uh, different kind of moves and uh, mindset to design those stuff but uh, once you get into the mood uh it, it becomes easy but uh, for me, when I work on multiple projects, sometimes I work on exteriors, sometimes I work on smart mobility, uh, mm-hmm. things uh, that, you know, nobody has seen before yet, uh, like personal mobility mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes exteriors, uh, interiors. Uh, so it's, it's basically you that, you know, who has to manage the time. But of course, it's hard. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of hard, but yeah. eventually you have to do it. And how do you switch the mindset so often? Like, uh, don't you have ever have creative blocks when you're switching from, you know, one, let's say, interior to exterior, exterior to interior, or different kind of mobility? Don't you have a creative block? 
yes i do have a creative block uh, and and uh, it's it, you know there's a famous saying in hindi loha hi lohe ko kaatta hai so <laughs> when when i get to that kind of uh, period where i i okay i just can't think of anything i just switch it with another creativity i as i said i am um, i'm an artist i was an artist before i became a designer mm-hmm. i start drawing humans so i still have sketchbook with me <laughs> and whenever you find myself you know uh, doing nothing i'll be scribbling something maybe humans so my my favorite subject is uh, you know making portraits mm. right so so yeah that gives a you know nice refresh to it's it's like you know for me going out and mm. the previous thing that i was uh, mm. told before like yeah. going out and seeing the things again from a different perspective mm. and what inspires you the most what inspires me the most uh yeah, it's not just one thing i'd say it's first of all um it's the people that is uh, you know that i'm i really find myself blessed with that i'm surrounded with um who are doing great whatever they do for example you <laughs> i i i no seriously man i mean um it's 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 been i i feel so great about in india there's someone who's doing you know design podcast on on these kind of topics and make and you know make people aware all to this young aspirants because at our time when i i was you know going to this kind of field i had a very blur uh, direction but now when you know you see these kind of stuff on internet you could make your you know very uh cool and very sorted down perspective yeah and uh, not just about podcast because also there are i'm i'm surrounded with people who make films who mm-hmm. make uh, who, who are doing some music who are doing animations so when when i see those people you know around me and seeing their work mm-hmm. uh, that makes me feel you know sometimes what the hell am i doing with my time i should you know sharpen my pencil even more that's so really that's good. that's one great motivation in my life helping people i'm surrounded with that's great that's great and i like the fact that you mentioned that you here did not mention about the transportation design anywhere <laughs> your inspiration so i like that fact uh, and also opens up a very interesting topic uh so see you you said like people in different fields uh mm-hmm. doing good things they are like kind of inspiring you to do well in your field right so right. when you are looking for inspiration for projects that you are working on so do you refer to different domains for inspiration or how does that happen absolutely absolutely i never when 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 i you know have to make a project i never go to uh, to famous websites to look at what uh, people are doing with you know a uh, form over four wheels mm. i this is this is the best part uh, what i find um, i was being taught when i was doing my college in dsk so there was this guy again george corona guess i guess he gave us the best education any designer could have he uh, he tried to say us things that you know don't go for uh, materials don't go for uh, example form don't run behind it go for the feeling and the form would eventually look beautiful so uh that's what i mean first i try when i want to get inspired i want i i go for the feeling what kind of feeling you know a a user would have with whatever project you know product i am designing and based on that with all uh, all these years of experience of drawings and it comes eventually mm. so that's one thing you know you have to hit first when you search for an inspiration search for the feeling search for the the emotion you want to give to to the user and eventually form becomes beautiful 
beautiful beautiful loved every bit of what you say because uh, uh it's it's so close to also uh, what i have learned and how i have picked up a lot of things from our discussions when we were at the design school in italy mm-hmm. and completely resonate with what you just mentioned it's a, it's a beautiful thing and to have feelings and emotions like to design something that can convey feelings and emotions i think is the most coolest part of the design job in my opinion my opinion <laughs> <laughs> yeah no I, i completely agree with you i mean we are basically artists with practicality <laughs> that's what designers are <laughs> right mm-hmm. cool so uh before uh i i let you go today i would like to ask you a few things that you would like to mention for the design aspirants in india especially from the indian uh point of view uh design perspective and everything there are a lot of students who want to you know become transportation designers so mm. what do you want to say to them i would say that uh you know don't um first thing is because uh, like how we live today in in this kind of era we where we have social media to influence us and on social media we just see the success of mm. whatever influencers you follow mm. or any person it then really necessary have to be an influencer but uh, i i'd rather suggest to you know to them to go deeper like what actually went into what they are made of you know follow the process understand the the thing the process the the sacrifices sometimes they you know gave to whatever they are now and uh, let's take for example a design field right uh, mm-hmm. nobody went famous just by that you know yeah, yeah. so and try and understand like uh, how if, if if somebody is influencing you you know somebody you are inspired with try to maybe talk with them like what kind of process do they follow what kind of uh, things actually go into design try and understand the field first because nowadays these things are happening and even i get a lot of uh, you know texts from uh, uh, a lot of aspiring designers like okay i want to become a designer i want to uh, draw cars make sexy bikes uh, but uh, they think i mean i feel sometimes they feel that it's uh, it's 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 a celebrity life it's not it's not because you have to put all the dedication you have to sometimes maybe isolate from whatever you were used to maybe sometimes you won't speak with your friends just because you are creating something right so understand first like what actually goes into making or designing a thing how hard it is to design even a, a sphere if it actually works for a bluetooth speaker or anything it looks simple but it, trust me when you try to do it with you know all the design knowledge it's it's not so that's what i think and and be passionate of course it will of course pay off uh just uh, just don't lose hope because this feel is super challenging mm-hmm. and sometimes it it would make uh, people who actually you know don't understand this feel thoroughly uh sometimes people get uh, depressed like okay this is not what i thought design would be yeah understand the process it, it takes a lot of time that's um, what i suggest but yeah if you, if you are uh, actually when you when you pass all these things the feel is rewarding yeah. it's is for sure that's great that's great thank you thank you so much for joining in uh, today nikhil and i know you're super busy you're working on different kinds of projects thank you for taking your time and uh, doing this for the aspirants 
बहुत मजा आएगा सुन के आई नो आई नो इट राइट नाउ आई आई एंजॉयड इट आई एंजॉयड इट थरली एंड इट वाज आई एम रियली ग्लैड दैट वी कुड डू समथिंग लाइक दिस बिकॉज़ लाइक यू मेंशन देयर वाजंट something like this i wish there was something for me you know when i was uh, preparing for uh, you know planning to go into design or transportation design or whatever so mm. i'm definitely sure that lot of students will uh, like would be really really uh, glad to hear this conversation i i, I hope so <laughs> <laughs> i i tried my best you know finding <laughs> and um please yeah uh if anybody has another point of view over this it's completely fine because that's yes, yes, uh, yes. completely my story and yeah. i told it in my way so just be passionate and follow your dreams like this say and it would be rewarding for sure great thanks man thanks man see you thanks for having me too pleasure